这些坐落在悉尼远郊的大风车，属于一家来自中国的企业——北京能源国际。北京能源国际是中国最大的风力电能生产商。二零一四年，京能国际收购了澳大利亚一家大型风能发电厂，由此创建了他们在澳的第一个大规模风光互补项目。Cullen Rain Twin Farm, seventy-three wind turbines. Powers about seventy thousand homes on an average day of of wind, and, and that was the beginning. 从那之后，京能国际又先后扩展了三个不同的可再生能源项目，而且新的项目还在建设中。This is, you know, trying to get on board with、uh, the transformation of Australia's electricity grid from fossil fuels to to renewable energy. It's certainly the cleanest. It's now a bit of a no-brainer to get on with that transformation. It's a big project. It's it's a nation-building project. It's a big deal. You sound like you're very patriotic. You want to put the green back in the green and gold. It sounds a, a large project for for Australia. <laughs> That's right.、Uh, I hadn't thought about it in, in terms of the green and gold, but、uh, yeah, I certainly am very passionate about、uh, a cleaner energy future for Australia. I think there's multiple benefits, not only the cleanness, but there's also,、uh, you know, lots of potential for for jobs and for economic growth coming out of the investment in these projects. 帮助更多澳大利亚家庭逐步淘汰过时能源，引入可再生能源，是金能国际澳洲项目的目标。借助风力，扬帆起航。行驶这艘巨轮的船长，则是北京能源国际澳大利亚控股有限公司副总经理德里克·鲍威尔。鲍威尔原本是一名一级方程式赛车工程师，如今他已是叱咤澳大利亚绿色清洁能源赛道的领跑者。So, Derek, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tim. Now, I was going to ask you before you joined this industry and this company, you worked for Honda. Yeah, I certainly had a. An unusual background、uh, history compared to other people who are working in the renewable energy industry. That's right. Yeah, I、uh, decided when I was in, in my youth that I really wanted to work in motorsport, and I ended up working in Formula One for for Honda. So you're a, you're a petrol head by by background. That's right. Yeah,、uh, and at some stage I decided that maybe that wasn't for me,、uh, and I really wanted to do something that was I felt was you know. Helping the world become a better place, you know, for the for the future. I made the decision to try and to do that, but also to try and get into an industry that was definitely growing. I chose renewable energy, and you know, I haven't looked back. Two hours south of Sydney, you've got a a hybrid operation where there's some wind and some solar. How, how does that how does that work? The hybrid model. Yeah, that's an interesting project. That was the first large-scale co-located solar and wind farm in Australia. That's pretty exciting to put them together, isn't it? Yeah, I, it was a, a really good opportunity because people are often talking about renewable energy being unreliable.、Uh, you know, the wind might not blow or the sun might not shine. But when you start putting them together, you reduce the the likelihood that you're going to have.、Uh, Those periods of low energy generation, because when the wind's not blowing, well, the sun, you know, could, could be shining or, or or vice versa. From Sydney, 出发，向西北开三个半小时车，就可以到达田园小镇马奇。不远处，这个骄阳照射的地方，就是北京能源公司最新投资的纯太阳能项目。We continue to to grow the business. One of them is a new solar farm near Mudgee. It's in a, a small town called Walla.、Uh, it's 350 megawatts DC, which might not mean much to to viewers, but if you think about solar panels on roofs, you have you know 10 or or 12. This plant will have about 600,000 solar panels to get up to that 350 megawatts. So it's a it's a big project. It's one of the largest solar farms in New South Wales, or it will be when it's built. Well, that's a lot of panels in anyone's language, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. And ultimately, if everyone has solar panels, they can be mini power stations in their own home, can't they? That's right. Distributed generation. That's、uh, you know, I think Australia ranks the、uh, the highest in terms of average amount of solar PV on top of people's roofs. That's one part of the energy mix here.、Uh, and large-scale wind and solar, you know, has a, has a big part to play as well. 
So what you're saying in terms of resources, sun and wind, Australia could be a renewable energy superpower. It's got the land and sun and, and wind, but it needs skilled labour and it needs capital from China and elsewhere to make it happen. That's right. Yeah. 能够帮助澳大利亚实现这一目标的人并不多，这位先生便是其中之一。他被称为“中国通”，他和中国关系密切，对中国也非常了解。You lined up, brother. All good to go. All g o o d morning. 他就是沃里克·史密斯，在澳大利亚前总理约翰·霍华德在位期间担任部长，他也长期担任澳中理事会主席。Smith, welcome the program. Now I've often said you're probably the best Liberal Prime Minister we never had. <laughs> well, look, I, I, you're, you're, you've met my late mother, and you can still remember her injunction to everyone she ever met from the media or anywhere else. Why can't my son Warwick from Launceston have a go? There should be a Tasmanian every century that goes to Canberra as leader. I cannot but agree. Now, having said that, I mean, had you been Prime Minister, how do you think the relationship with China would be? Uh, well, I, I'm a little bit more exposed to China than most people, both as a politician, being there in Canberra for about 17 years, and more latterly in business. My sense is there needed to be a bit more an appreciation of the depth of the 50-year relationship that we've had with China at multiple levels, and that also that our commercial relationship is extremely significant. Of all the countries in the Asian vertical, Australia has a higher percentage of its trade with China than anyone else. It's our largest customer by far, both on the merchandise side, you know, gas, coal, iron ore, uh, then, then, then wool, it's very significant, and wheat, and then and a whole range of other products and services. So my argument always is that um, you respect your customer, you respect both the system under which they operate, You expect for them to respect ours, and that our approach should be one of principled realism. We need to be realistic about the market that we're in, that we've always been a trading nation since we were established. We always will be. There will be changing relationships in the trade environment, but at the present time, China is a large one. So my argument would have been, uh, as Prime Minister, we deal with the principal issues. We deal with the changes that are taking place in China, and their change is more profound than our change because of their trajectory as to becoming a very, very large and potentially, under their scenario by 2049, the largest economy and most significant country in the world. We have to respect that aspiration, but we have to find out where we fit, and、uh, that takes a bit more nuance, a bit more subtlety than what we saw in the last 10 years. Would you see Australia as friends of China, or China's our customer, our frenemy, our rival, or our partner? How would you describe it? I, I, I look at them, and I'm a commercial person. I look at them as a partner. We have a customer who wants what we have in a significant way, and so they are our partner. Now, partners require some、uh, trust. They require some respect. The mutuality that exists between the needs that they have. And the needs that we have, and they have needs for a developing country of product that we have, and some services that we have. This kind of mutual trust thinking is not something that Australia is willing to give up. China's Prime Minister Australia Xi Jinping also expressed the same view in the recent program. A lot of people talk about、uh, the national interest in Australia and in China with respect to. Foreign investment, but、uh, as you've pointed out, often Chinese foreign investment plays an important role in shoring up jobs for Australians and providing revenue. Do you think we need to understand more about the national interests of both countries? Well,、uh, China and Australia, we are two、uh, two nations. We are two independent nations, and China has China's national interest, and Australia does the same, their own interest. But when we put these two countries together, we'll find out there are areas where the two interests overlap with each other. And this is what I call it: the overlapping areas of our common interest. And this is the area where we can, we can cooperate.、And、there are areas which do not overlap,、uh, but these are the area of、uh, differences. But in my views, there's no area, no such area、uh, between China and Australia that、uh, we find it 
confrontational in, in nature. There's no such area. So it is my strong belief that uh, we've been cooperating for so successfully for the past several decades. And let us be friends, let us be uh, partners rather than adversaries or uh, foes. Uh, and let's continue to be uh, good, good partners. 北京能源国际在澳大利亚的项目就是国家之间、企业之间合作共赢的实际案例。Now I've heard by 2023 you want to target power for is it 750,000 homes? That's quite an ambitious target. I mean, do you think you'll meet that, or is that just aspirational? Uh, we we certainly want to grow.、Uh, there's the need to grow. The government has legislated, you know, 43%.、Uh, Decrease in emissions from 2005 levels by by 2030, and the electricity sector is very well placed to deliver a large portion of those reductions. So technology exists exists to do that, and there's a desire. There are, of course, some some challenges and some hurdles、uh, for us to get past,、uh, but I'm confident. So that target for the Albanese government is. It's pretty ambitious, isn't it? But do you think they can do it, or what's in their way? Do you think?、Uh, I think、uh, it depends who you talk to and whether it's ambitious.、Uh, you yeah, know,、I'm、I think it's. You. I think it's great. We've got a target.、Uh, some people think that it should be higher, and some people think that it should be lower.、Uh, but we're committed to to meeting the target that's that's been legislated. 此外，澳大利亚还有另一个宏大目标，那就是在二零五零年实现净零排放。So the Albanese government. You know, has announced this target, net zero. Do you think it's an ambitious target? What what will get in their way? Do you think? In terms of challenges that that face the government, I think there are there are numerous challenges.、Uh, there's a, a labour shortage at the moment. You know, we've seen immigration decrease、uh, during the COVID period,、uh, and we need skilled people to、um, to to do this transition,、uh, and lots of them, I think.、Uh, so, so there's one one. You know, potential problem. The other thing is that the, the costs involved here are, are high.、Uh, in 2018, we saw that there was 10 gigawatts of renewable energy constructed, and it cost about six billion dollars. But that 10 gigawatts is is nowhere near what we need. You know,、uh, 30 gigawatts has been estimated、uh, to replace some of our aging coal-fired power stations that will that will retire soon.、Uh, and so those, those sort of、uh, Volumes of of investment、um, they require、uh, foreign investment. I think it's very difficult with the size of the Australian economy to to you know fund those projects locally. So fi- finding out a way to attract that investment、uh, is one of the challenges faced by the government. Let's pick up two issues here. There's labour and capital. So with with labour, can we invest in TAFE and training? Can we retrain? Coal miners and people from the older industries to work in the new, or is it just an immigration question? It must be multifaceted. I think it's a combination of all of those, Tim. Yeah, I think one thing we've seen is that it's not just Australia going through this transition.、Uh, it's worldwide, and so immigration used to be a good source of of those sort of skills, and I think it can be a source. <laughs> But those people are valued in their home countries at the moment, so you know it's it's getting more difficult to attract them to to come to Australia. We have to rely on things like the weather、uh, r- rather than just the industry. Yeah. Now you've talked about labour, but there's also capital. Australia's a you know small country in terms of population. Do we need to attract foreign capital from China, from other countries, to make this great transformation? Yeah, I certainly agree with that. We need to attract that foreign investment.、Uh, we need the, the price of energy to the consumer、uh, depends on the cost of constructing those, you know, those、uh, generation stations. And one of the major costs in building a big power station is the cost of your finance, you know, the cost of your capital. And there's just、uh, lots of cheaper options to get capital when you open yourselves up to that that foreign investment. 但无论是在澳大利亚还是在中国，可再生能源都存在着巨大机遇。这个中国的新能源电力发展正处于一个重要的战略机遇期。这个中澳两国对气候问题的认识是深入且一致的，应该是。那气候变化和环境的恶化是
全球经济繁荣及人类福祉的生存的最大的威胁，也是人类共同面临的切亟待解决的问题。张平是北京能源国际控股有限公司的董事长。尽管身在中国，他始终关注着澳大利亚项目的进展，也对中澳新能源合作充满期待。澳大利亚各界朋友们，在澳的中国企业家们，我是北京能源国际控股有限公司董事长张平。呃，今年是中澳建交五十周年。五十年来，中澳两国在众多领域开展了广泛的合作和交流。有力地推动了中国的现代化建设，同时也促进了澳洲经济的发展和繁荣。特别是在可再生能源行业，更是合作成果丰硕，实现碳达峰、碳中和也是中澳两国的共同愿望。我认为，中澳两国可再生能源领域的深入合作，符合两国人民的根本利益。希望澳大利亚能够保持稳定、友好的政治氛围。和公平公正的营商环境，希望行业同仁聚沙成塔，笃行不怠，共创中澳可再生能源合作的美好未来。谢谢大家。I've just met Beijing Energy International Company that looks at wind and solar. In Australia, Chinese company operating in Australia.、Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you think climate change and that challenge? Is a new area of cooperation between China and Australia. Absolutely, yeah.、Uh, well, between China and Australia, we have、uh, so many areas we have been cooperating in the past, and、uh, we should continue these co cooperation in these areas. At the same time, we should explore new frontiers, and、uh, climate change is just one of these new frontiers, in my views.、Uh, we also can think about green energy and、uh, think about uh, uh, infrastructure. But in terms of climate change, green.、Uh, Uh, we've been covering it very successfully, actually,、uh, over the past several, well, at least one or two decades.、Um, you know, the, the earliest、uh, solar pad technology was from a New South Wales University.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, we commercialized, we commercialized it in China. It's been very successful. And、um, now China is.、Uh, we, we have some experience and technology in this area, and Australia has resources, has the technology, and、uh, there's a new innovations、uh, constantly. So this good, good, good potential. And by the way, and both Chinese government and the Australian government have good,、uh, strong ambition to、uh, make further efforts to address the climate change、uh, challenges. And this is an area where we can cooperate,、uh, and it's good for both sides. I think this is a, a great tradition of the Chinese nation: brave enough to reach out, to leave your own home, hometown, and、uh, go to different、uh, new places. And、uh, make friends with the local people, and、uh, be friends and cooperate, and、uh, make our、uh, business successful. Trade with neighbors, with other people, with other from people from other countries, and this is a part of the、uh, Chinese culture. And、uh, in this upcoming global uh, economic uh, environment, it's important that uh, uh, countries uh, in the world and people、uh, from different parts of the world should think about.、Uh, Addressing the challenges together. Climate change is the most important challenge of the present time. It requires all countries to work together. Geneworks in New Wales' new clean energy project is not only the new era of cooperation between the two countries, but it is also the opportunity for both countries to face the climate change challenge. I think、uh, the next 15 years, yeah, I really think we can make some, some big steps. We should be proud of what we've achieved to date and、uh, you know, be planning for the future. Now, finally, because you were a gas guzzler and now you're Mr. Renewables, what car do you drive? Yeah, well, I'm still undergoing that transition myself, Tim. Yeah, I live quite a way out of the city.、Uh, the electric car infrastructure hasn't quite worked its way out to me. I am sorry to say that I still do drive a fossil fuel powered car, but、uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to to making the transition. Well, I look forward to hearing about your your future journey and.、Um, The, the great transformation of Australia too that you've described. Thank you, Derek. Thank you very much, Tim. Good.